So one of the guys I made a full length video on coming out of the draft was Jalen Hurd just because I thought that he was a very interesting guy coming out of the draft. I thought he really has the potential to be a true, maybe not number one receiver, but at least a very good number two receiver. I think that the Niners receiving core could absolutely see a big jump next season with them adding, you know, both Debo Samuel and Jalen Hurd. I probably will make a video on Debo Samuel as well, but this one's about Jalen Hurd, so let's get into it. If you watch that full-length video, one of the things that I had some worries about was the fact that he wasn't the best blocker. And when I say that, I don't necessarily mean that he's not giftedly a good blocker. More so, he actually can be a good blocker once he latches on. But he just, he kind of was just bad at getting himself in position to be able to make a block a lot of times during college. It's something I said he was going to have to work on going into the NFL. But honestly, just watching it, I do think that he worked on it a lot going into the NFL. I mean, like, take a look at this play, for example. It's going to be a run to the bottom half of the screen. And so Hurd is going to have to go out to block that cowboy who's over there. And so, for a lot of guys, they'd probably just block straight up. However, look at the positioning that Hurd is going to have here. He's going to run to the bottom half of the screen of that cowboy, since it is going to be a run to the bottom half of the screen. So at this point, there's no way that he's going to get into this play unless Hurd just falls down. I mean, Hurd has done such a good job of getting into position right now, he's just in a perfect situation, which is kind of the opposite of what he used to do back in college. And he did things like this a few times, which to me signifies that clearly when he was drafted, the 49ers coaching staff knew, okay, listen, this guy has a ton of potential, he has a ton of talent, but we're going to have to work on his blocking and really work on his ability to just get in position to block. That's something we're going to have to make a conscious effort to work on once we draft him. And clearly it works out. I mean, you know, this is a long run, so there was plenty of time for that cowboy to get into the area, but Hurd just got in good positioning, and that's really all he had to do. That's what you want to see, it really is, because, I mean, when Hurd can be in good position to block, this guy can block well. You know, when you draft a 6'4 receiver, part of the appeal is, hey, now we have someone who can block well. In a lot of ways, it kind of gives you an extra tight end out there somewhat, you know? Having a guy who can make those types of blocks, but also being a receiver definitely has value. And again, this guy can block well when necessary. Like, if you take a look at this play, it's going to be an outside zone to the top half of the screen. And if you look at Hurd, he's the number two receiver on this play. So that means he's going to be responsible of blocking that cowboy who's over there. So again, first things first, he's going to have to get in position. And look how he just goes out and attacks that cowboy. That's a good play. I mean, it is a little bit risky because, you know, if that player were to get around her, then, you know, you basically just completely lost your one-on-one -on -one matchup. We've seen him do that in college, so, you know, a little bit risky. But again, if it works, don't worry about it. I mean, as long as he can make sure that, you know, if someone tries to make a move, you then take a step back and continue making your block, you're fine. I think think Hurd will be able to do that. Again, there might be some growing pains. He might miss a block or two in the NFL. It'll probably happen. Actually, it'll almost definitely happen. But if the first preseason game was any indication, he's come a long way since college, so I have some optimism. But also, now that he's latched on, this is actually an interesting situation, because if you notice, his left arm is on, but not the right arm. His right arm is not making contact right now. So because of that, I mean, if you're a defensive player and you're trying to push Hurd backwards, and Hurd only has one arm on you, this is a great situation. Hurd is going to have to get his right arm on his assigned man, otherwise this play just simply isn't going to work. But again, if you just get both your hands on him, but your feet aren't in good position, then you'll just fall over. So you have to get your feet over to the top half of the screen and get your right hand on that cowboy, all before your halfback gets into the play. But that's going to be exactly what he does, and he's able to finish off this block. I mean, that's just that's actually a really good block by Hurd. And that's what you want to see happen. I mean, that's honestly my biggest knock on Hurd going out of college, was him getting in position to be able to make block. Because he's a good blocker, but he just, his positioning is often off. But if he can get in position to be making blocks and then he can actually be able to make blocks, now he's not a hindrance in the rushing game. Now he's actually someone who can help you out a lot. So yeah, going into this game, that is definitely something I was interested in looking at. I wanted to see if Hurd made any improvements in getting in positioning, and he did. So that's a great sign for 49ers fans. Again, it's the preseason, it's a small sample size, I get all of that. But you know, it's a good sign, and that's what you look for. You know, one play that is very much a staple of this 49ers offense is something like this one. It's going to be a cover three zone, and then they're going to run play action. And so, you know, this could draw the linebackers in and can make that gap between the safeties and the linebackers wider. And that's important because they have a receiver running in between them, and not just any receiver, but Jalen Hurd. This is another thing I talked about in my video about him that he can do very well. Part of the reason why I think the 49ers drafted him is to run these types of routes. So let's see if he can do it at the NFL level. And first thing you'll notice actually is that there is going to be a cowboy who's kind of in Hurd's way. And you know, again, this kind of goes back to the football as a sloppy sport sometimes and plays don't exactly work exactly as they do on paper. You know, Hurd's supposed to cut at a certain point, but if there's a cowboy that's right at that point, you're going to have to change things up a little. So Hurd is going to run a little bit deeper and then get over. So, you know, Mullins had to actually throw on the run, but he was still able to make the catch and even bulldozer his way into the end zone. 
And that's another thing about Hurd. I mean, you know, he's a former running back. You know, it's kind of crazy that he was a 6'4 running back. But hey, I mean, he could do all right there. But he's definitely better as a receiver. But it then helps you out when he's trying to, you know, get over some guy. Again, that's part of the reason why the 49ers drafted him. That's part of the reason I was so high on him coming out of the draft was because I think he's just a remarkable talent. He has an incredibly unique skill set. And honestly, I mean, he just, he really did shine in this preseason game. I mean, you know, there was only three touchdowns in the entire game, and he had two of them, and he also had another catch, so, you know, he had three catches for 31 yards. Pretty solid. You'll take those numbers. Obviously, only three catches wouldn't be anything to write home about if he was out there for the whole game, but he was out there for about half of the game, so, you know, good job by Herb. And, of course, it's the preseason, so you really shouldn't be looking at numbers too much anyways. You should more just be watching the tape and seeing how that develops. But, anyways, basically what I'm kind of doing with this video is I'm talking about things that I've already talked about, heard. You know, if you watch my last video, you'll probably enjoy this one more because you saw me already bring up a lot of these things. I'm kind of showing how it'll translate into the NFL because, you know, sometimes you do things well in college, but you don't do it well enough to then fool NFL players. And sometimes you do things well in college and are also able to make sure that you can do it well in the NFL. You know, sometimes it does carry over. And at least in one preseason game all of her strengths in that video have also carried over to be strengths in at least a preseason game and I personally believe that it will be strengths I mean listen they drafted this guy to be a number three or four option so I'm not really concerned about he'll be able to do that like take a look at this play for example it's going to be a cover two zone and that's Hurd's route basically he's in check down duty on this play if your quarterback doesn't like what he sees then he's just going to check it down to Hurd and then that'll begin to play that's the way this is supposed to work but again, one thing I love about Hurd is the stem of his route. Like, take a look at what's going on right now. You have absolutely no idea which way he's about to cut. So for the Cowboy who is in zone, you know, he doesn't know what's going on. For all he knows, Hurd's going to try to get over the top of him. He's going to cut to the outside. Any number of things could happen. Eventually, he'll cut to the inside. And granted, the Cowboy kind of just let him go because, you know, it's zone coverage. And if you're only going to get four yards, then he'll say, okay, take the four yards. But that's not really what I'm talking about. I'm more just talking about the good well-run route by Hurd on that one. Not every pass is going to come to you. Not every play is going to go for a touchdown. You know, sometimes you just got to do the little things, right? And that was a good well-run route by Hurd. And, you know, that's what I care about. That's why I'm breaking this down. There is also this play, which is not anything I've talked about in a previous video, where what Hurd is going to do is take a step back and take the screen pass, and then what the 49ers are going to do is they're going to have their, obviously, have their number one receiver go out to block that cowboy right there. And then let's have the tight end and center move over to block those two Cowboys. So, you know, I think this is an interesting play to break down. You know, the 49ers are a team who likes to run screens from time to time. And I could see Hurd potentially being a guy who takes those screens, especially considering the fact that this guy was a running back in college. And that's kind of why I am so high on him once again. Is he just He's a freak athlete and he's just so fun to watch. And, you know, that kind of also does translate to the NFL to a degree. Sometimes just having talent wins out, even if you don't necessarily fit in just one spot. We've seen Cordell Patterson, even though his skill set doesn't necessarily fit one position, still be able to have an impact on an NFL field. And honestly, I think Hurd could be kind of the same way. I mean, I think Hurd will be a much better receiver than Patterson is, but I think that Hurd also will have an X factor that will add some value to the 49ers offense. Anyways, if you watch the start of this play, I mean, again, nothing too fancy at this point. You know, he catches the ball, starts running downfield. It's pretty much what you would expect. Also, I should note that this is a third down and 26. So, you know, they're basically just trying to pick up some yards here. A first down seems almost like it's definitely not going to happen. So at this point, basically what's supposed to happen is that that 49er is supposed to block that cowboy, and that should be the end of the play, essentially. If he blocks it well, then Hurd will be able to move up to the second level and then probably get brought down. But watch what we're going to see Hurd do here. He kind of jukes him out a little bit. I mean, 61 didn't even make a block at all on that one, but Hurd was still able to kind of make a move and pick up some yards. It could be argued whether he should or shouldn't have done that. I mean, on a screen pass, you do often want to stay to one side of the field. But you know what? It's a third down and 26, and the chances of you getting the first down are so minuscule. Sometimes you just say, hey, I can pick up some extra seven yards this way. I'll just do that. We'll play the field position game. You know, field position is important. I mean, it does. it is something that matters. Uh, I thought Herb did a pretty good job on that one, you know, just mentally. But I thought he did a very good job on that one physically. Being able to make a juke like that is just something that will definitely be effective in the NFL. This guy has such tremendous footwork despite being 6'4". It almost makes you wonder if he ever played basketball at a certain point. Because it doesn't seem like he ever did. But I mean, listen, this guy, you know, 6'4 and can move like that. He would be great on a basketball team. But also, you know, he's great on an NFL team. 
basket. If you're wondering if he could jump and rebound guys out, well, he absolutely can, and I'll prove it with this play, where, again, this is actually the one play you're going to want to see him run pretty consistently, and that's going to be the fade route to the outside. Because if he can be effective at these at the NFL level, this would do so much for the 49ers. I mean, just think about it. You could send Kittle out to one side of the field, put Hurd on the other side of the field. So now, you know, if the number one corner is taking away Kittle, now you have a number two corner, and if Hurd is really good at these types of plays, then you have someone who's very good at getting a fade route in the end zone, going up against a number two corner now instead of a number one corner, which can do so much, you know? Or they put the number one corner on Hurd, but now you have a number two corner on Kittle, and you gotta love that matchup. Not to mention, you can throw Samuel over the middle, and also now you have a running game to worry about. So it just, it'll open up so much if Hurd can be successful at these types of plays at the NFL level. And so take a look at the positioning Hurd is gonna have before he tries to go up and get this ball. This is just actually a perfect situation for Hurd, because if you look, his assigned man is not facing the ball at all, he's facing the other way. Honestly, on a goal line fade, you do kind of have to turn your head around at a certain point because otherwise you're just not going to make the catch. But if you look at Hurd, I mean, he's facing the ball all the way and he's ready to make a catch, which is key because now he can go up and get it. And also being 6'4 definitely does come into play there. But also if you're the only guy who can see the ball, I mean, he's not going to miss those. Again, I'm not trying to overreact over just one game, but he's pretty much checked off every single box that I would have had coming into the preseason. I mean, did he work on his blocking positioning? Yes, he clearly did. Can he run those crossing routes on play action with some efficiency? at least in terms of one preseason game, yes, he absolutely has. Is his good ability to run stem routes translating into the NFL? Well, in terms of one preseason game, yes. And can he catch those goal line fades? Again, at least one time, yes, he did. You know, that's what you like to see. You know, this guy could be such a perfect fit in this 49ers offense, and he really could be a number two receiver. I could really see it happening, or at least a number three receiver. Now, one last play I want to talk about, there actually was one, I'm not sure if I'd call it a negative, but there was an interception thrown on a pass intended for Hurd. However, it wasn't really Hurd's fault. The way it went down is this is going to be a cover one concept, and Hurd is going to be running that route right there. And this is interesting because, you know, if this is a cover one blitz or a cover two man or something like that, then this would actually be a great route to throw to. If it's cutting over the middle of the screen, that's a great angle for a quarterback to try to hit. But again, there has to be nobody else in that area because otherwise somebody could just jump in front of the route and pick it off. So if it was a cover one blitz and someone else was rushing in, well then that would be a good situation. But for Bedford, he looks over and sees that there's two Cowboy CDs who are deep. They're both off the screen right now. So I'm assuming that he's going to say, okay, this is probably cover two man if it is man coverage. So then I should throw to this route, which would be true. Against the cover two man, you should throw to that route. Because, I mean, look, take a look at what happens right after the ball is snapped. He would be open if it was just a one-on-one -on -one matchup. So Hurd himself actually ran this route pretty well. Now, it turns out to be a cover one robber, not a cover two. That's how number 37 there was able to break over and make that interception. Good play by him, but also Bethard has to be more aware. He just, you know, that's why it's called a cover one robber. They can rob you. The replay team will show a better angle in a second so you can kind of see that, you know, he was open when the ball was coming to him, except for the fact that there was a safety who was able to break in and make that play. And, you know, that's going to happen. That was just basically his route wasn't great against that type of coverage. And honestly, it actually could have been. Bethard would have just had to wait an extra second before making that throw, but he didn't it got intercepted. It is what it is. I just wanted to mention that play because I figured people might bring it up in the comments. However, it totally was not Hurd's fault by any means. He actually ran a pretty good route on that one. It was just a bad route to run against that coverage. So yeah, I mean, the more I watch from Jalen Hurd, the more excited I get and the more excited I would get if I'm a 49ers fan because, I mean, this guy, he can play. I mean, honestly, this 49ers wide receiving core could go from one of the worst in the league last year to one of the better ones this next year if everything works out perfectly. I mean, Debo Samuel is very talented. I might make a video about his performance last night as well. He had some big plays. Let me know in the comments below if that's something you're interested. But anyways, you know, I think he could definitely be a true number one receiver. That's why they drafted him, at least. And then you got Jalen Hurd, who can come through in certain situations. And also Marquise Goodwin, who can definitely take the top off of the defense. I mean, he is an Olympian, after all. But yeah, when you also throw in George Kittle, I mean, this is now a very talented football team. Honestly, I think that Jalen Hurd getting drafted in round three will be an absolute steal. I'm looking forward to seeing how it plays out, and that's my opinion. I'd like to know what you guys think, and as always, thanks for watching.